Hello, I'm Tony Wright, photographic and DVD editor and assistant editor of British Railway Modelling. And I am here at STEE, the Museum of the Great Western Railway in Swindon. In fact, I'm here at the invitation of STEAM and my grateful thanks are due to the museum's curators and organisers for letting us have this facility. And I'm standing next to arguably one of the most famous locomotives of all time the last steam locomotive built by British Railways, Evening Star. And the reason for me being here, we're going to make a DVD about Backman's Dynamis. And I'm here to meet Tony Lowe, who is Backman's representative. Hello there, Tony. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. to see you again. And yourself. We've and got yourself. very realistic sounds around, haven't we? We certainly have. We certainly have. And what better place to film a DVD in front of a very famous locomotive? In fact, Backman makes a very fine model of this, don't We're they? We're certainly doing a very fine model it is, yes, definitely. But this is the main thing. It is. Backman's superb new product, Dynamis, DCC. Yes, and um, what we intend to do on the DVD, Tony, is show the ease of use of Dynamis, and also there'll be separate channels chapters on the DVD for the advanced features for customers who already own a dynamic system as yes. well. So it isn't just for the newcomer or the beginner? Not at all. Not More at sophisticated. All. Well remember I'm a cynic about DCC and just about everybody knows that. Anyway my friend, we're off to the Sir Daniel Gooch Theatre where you'll be explaining to me all about this. Yes certainly will. Thank you. Certainly. We are now in the Sir Daniel Gooch Theatre, a magnificent facility, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely superb. And absolutely superb. ideal for presenting this piece on digital. And the leading question, of course, is why go digital, Tony? Why go digital? Well, personally, the things which make digital exciting for myself and for a lot of users now is the accessibility to access sounds and lighting features on locomotives, individually controlling those sounds and lighting features. Um, it reduces the layout wiring, however I will state that it's good railway practice to have good wiring on layout. But that's the layout. true whether it's analogue, exactly, digital yes, or anything. Exactly, you've got to have, to have good, that, yeah. good wiring, is very important. Um, it also, to me as well, gives you that feel that you are in the cab of the locomotive, you mm. are driving the locomotive, again because of the functionality of, of the sounds, you, you're actually in the place of the driver, which I think is exciting. Uh, and it also allows you to program how the locomotive responds as a driver, mm. so you can make it accelerate very slowly if it's under load, or you can make it ex uh, decelerate very slowly if it's got a big load coming into a station to a stop. So the customization of the locomotive is great. Um, and then the thing which really excited me a few years ago was when I had two locomotives on a piece of track and I got them operating in independent directions. They were going mm. together and then going away from each other. So it's that independent control of the So you could double head with ease. Double head. And you could bank with ease. You can bank with them as well, and you could take the banking locomotive quite easy off the end of the banking, and we'll demonstrate that a little bit later on, so I'll show you how to do that. Well, I'm sure you will, so why go digital? Tony has the answers. Okay, Tony, now there's no way that I would call myself a novice in railway modelling. Not out of arrogance, I've no, just been in no. it for years and years and years. But let's take, say, the newcomer to the hobby. Not necessarily a child, but somebody who maybe was interested some years ago, maybe coming back to it, yeah. or maybe buying it for their children, sort of older children, but an entry level, something to start with. Yes, yes. And this is exactly what this is. It is, yes. It's the brand new Dynamis train set. Um, and we took the decision to put Dynamis into a train set because of its simplicity. Um, what you get in the train set, um, obviously you get a track pack, which obviously is capable of making up the oval with a siding. And it says here 940 millimetres by 1500 millimetres. Yes, yes. So it's a nice size starter Track, so, yes. Yeah. And you can buy additional track from Backman uh, to expand that up if you wish as well. Right. You get the twin uh, Sprinter locomotive, 
which has got DCC on board, so it's ready to go. So you don't need to take it apart and fit a chip? No, it's, all, it's already DCC on board, so that's right. all done at factory. Plug the two units together, and that's got operational lights as well. So um, we'll show you those lights working in a, a brief moment. Uh, you get the handset, the Dynamis handset, uh, which also comes with four... AAA batteries, so hmm. it comes with the batteries. So the batteries are there, because that's Everything always is in a the problem, box. Christmas Day or a birthday, out the bits go and the batteries don't work. Everything is in Please the box. Please do. Everything Good. is in the box ready to Must go. Must stress that. Everything works. Yeah, you get the base station, you get the receiver unit on the top, because it's wireless, there's no cables attaching the two mm -hmm. pieces together. You get a two and a half amp power supply, the track connector lead, and then a safety lanyard, which you can put that around your neck to actually hold the handset. So if you all of a sudden drop the handset, it's actually hanging on a, on a safety lanyard. So this is absolutely Everything plug and need. play? Plug and play, yes, plug and play. Great. The control box, liquid crystal display, LCD display, which has also got a backlight on there as well. That's got an adjustable brightness, um, and we even did the backlit screen in blue because um, we were conscious of people who've got colour blindness. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously they can still see the blue. So you've got the adjustable contrast on there. You've got the functionality buttons. There's ten buttons there with a shift key which makes up to 21 functions to control sound decoders and lighting controls, etc. on locomotives. Uh, you've got your menu buttons, which we'll talk about a little later on. And then on this side, we've got the emergency stop. Right, so that's, if there's a disaster, switches everything off. We hit that, You yes. hit that, yeah. Yeah. all power stop. Yeah, our direction um, button there, and then the joystick, which actually operates the speed and you'll see the speed graph there as well. Mm. Right then, Tony, we've put the unit on the track, mm. you've got the control panel. Yep, switched it on. It comes with a factory default of address 3, does it? It does, yes, yes. Yep. So, anyway, you're going to explain, if you wish to alter that, how to do that, yep. but that's now on 3, so you please switch, show me. We switch the controller on, and that's on 3 also. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is select the direction. If we want to switch the lights on, we can. Go on, please. And drive the locomotive. So it's as simple as one, two, three. Now when you started, have you set that then on a sort of small number of increments? To no, all I, all I actually did there, Tony, was actually using the controller, set that to a very, very slow, you'll see there on the screen, yes. the speed, is accelerating. So let me get this right. You're going to show me later all this fine tuning yeah. that one can do, but that's just factory set. Straight out of the box. Straight out of the box. Straight out of the box. And you've got, well, perfect slow running. Yeah. And you haven't even cleaned the track, but you should have done, really. Yes, I should have cleaned the track yes. to stop. It's always nice. Best practice, clean the track. But even with this rather grubby track, it's working perfectly. Yes. But don't have grubby track. Remember that. 